Greetings, listeners. Here we are once again to talk about the Cthulhu Mythos, its books, its monsters, its unfortunate human casualties, its timeline in general, and even its tangential bits like the dreamlands or things of a weird nature that are Lovecraftian leaning. Once again, we head down into those dark woods, further feeling those malevolent forces upon us. Once again, we walk down the lightless stone staircase in the middle of nowhere. You're listening to KZOM, Oleander Public Radio. Hey everyone, it's me, DB Spitzer, and on my virtual left, because uh, I, I, I mixed my uh, I mixed my office up a bit, uh, is Farmer Dave. Farmer Dave, how the heck are you doing this week? I, I am confused. I, I am on the left side, and now I, I, I don't know how to handle it. I've got to turn around. You told everyone last week that you were going to be on my virtual left, so... I know, I told them, and, <laughs> and, and here I am, and I just can't handle change. Okay, well, um, I, I, I'll i switch it back next week, but speaking of change, uh, we're not changing format this season. Uh, this season is the same format as last season, so I think this is a record of the uh, number of times that I've kept the uh, format for the show same between seasons, so... Season 15, welcome everyone. It is January, uh, February 2022, and uh, this month we've got uh, astounding stories of super science, uh, beetle hordes and phantoms and all that kind of fun stuff going on in our uh, weekly, daily, whatever you want to call it, uh, audiobook podcast, but this week, Farmer Dave uh, and I... Uh, uh, I am astounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ast- Astounded indeed. Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Book of Ivan. No, no, we're going to be talking about Ivan himself. And Ivan all... the Terrible. <laughs> Ivan the Terrible. I don't think he's that terrible. Uh, just maybe misunderstood. And then we're going to be talking a little bit about a little place in western Massachusetts uh, where the hills rise wild and... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's a town of brotherly love. Unfortunately, those brothers are the Waitley brothers. So <laughs> we'll be talking about Dunwich. Uh, Dave, Dave, um, before we get going, anything new going on in town? Just, uh, just reminding everybody that depending on when you listen to this, yeah. you have 13 more shopping days until John From Day. Yep, yep. So hit up your army surplus stores, hit up uh, places that sell tropical fruit, and any place that you can find palm fronds to make your own, uh, I don't know, uh, large cargo ship. <laughs> and walk uh, around with shirts with say USA yeah, and yeah. wooden guns oh um actually if you don't want to buy shirts you can just write USA on your chest and draw yeah. buttons which uh, is also very very popular but yeah okay. it depends on whether or not uh, where you're from and what uh, form of John from you are celebrating yes um, personally, personally, I want to recommend that if you can, you can go on Amazon and track down old K rations, uh, even the ones from the mid '40s that had benzedrine paste in them, and uh, you know, celebrate John from with K rations. Uh, it's, it's it's still okay uh, to use uh, modern uh, MRIs, MREs, MREs, uh, MREs. Uh, they don't come with cigarettes, and they don't come with uppers anymore. But, you know, it's the closest you can get to the old K rations and C rations if you're... Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um... And, yeah. and D rations. <laughs> you know what D rations were? No. So D rations, and you don't hear much about... They were vitamins. Okay. But but they would put them so that the soldiers would eat them. Yeah. They'd put them in candy bars. Oh! But then they thought, well, wait a minute. Now the soldiers are going to eat all of these, and we won't have. So they, they left out like sugar or something. Yeah. So they were they were terribly tasting candy bars, which kind of defeated the whole purpose. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, and they put oat flour in them so they wouldn't uh, melt too fast, and all kinds of stuff like that for those uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I do know a little bit about D-rations now that you mention it, but um, I, we're, not, we're not talking about uh, Hershey Tropical Bars here. We're not talking about any of that. We're not even talking about where to get the best pineapple and oleander for John Fromm, um, which is A1. A1 has the best produce. That's because they're the only town in no, the only place in town that has produce. So, uh, yeah, uh, you can drive to Boring. You can drive to Sandy. Uh, you're not you're, you're not going to get better produce than A1 produce and taxidermy uh, on Main Street. So, uh, Dave, Ibon. We we we've talked about the book of Ibon. Uh, uh, I think last season, but. Ibon, the guy who wrote it. What do you know? Well, so so I have this kind of view. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's come with me. Oh sure, sure. Let me get my boots on. An alternative, an alternative 1930s. Okay. Where the internet is there All and right. roll twenty, and so we have these friends that are going to play some role playing games. All right. And so they're all going to put their characters. And so we've got, as our esteemed dungeon master, is mm-hmm. August Darylis. Gotcha. So, you know, Darylis, Darylis, because he wants to play the, you know, he wants to play the sort of Mary Sue, mm-hmm. uh, blind, uh, you know, uh, oh, uh, the super detective, and he's yeah. kind of getting kicked out. So they're going to make him, but, you know, that's okay, because he always curves off of his friend for, for ideas. Yeah, yeah. So and we, we all know that Lady in Shrewsbury yeah. will be an NPC, but... <laughs> yeah, he'll be a DM NPC. Yeah. Um, but then again, we've got uh, Robert E. Howard, and he's got his his barbarian and intellectual uh-huh. Conan. Yeah. Um, and then uh, then we've got Lovecraft, you know, and he's, he's, uh, he's not able to play his contemporary game so he's playing uh, his his uh, Arab mystic uh, uh, Abdul Al Hazred. Yes, warlock, warlock or, oh, Cthulhu or something. Uh-huh. And then then we've got um, the last guy who wants to play, mm-hmm. and he you know Lovecraft wants his his friend Clark Ashton Smith to play the clerics. Yeah. Yeah, Clash is Tom, you know, the, the Atlantis Clark. Uh-huh. But no, no. In this universe, Clark Ashton Smith wants to play his favorite character, Ebon, the social, yeah, the yeah. sorcerer. Yeah, live in a black and, tower, hang out on Saturn, worship Sathagwa. Sounds sounds a lot like my life. Yeah, but oh, and, you know, a lot of it's, it's kind of like Smith's life because yeah. cause Avon is a poet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I would not ever say Clark Ashton Smith was a, a ladies' man, but of the three of them, yeah. he was the only one that had a, uh, uh, even though it was later in his life, he's the only one that had a successful marriage. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he was a, uh, a sculptor, uh, <laughs> an Avon. So, you yeah, know, so yes, I think that in a lot of ways, I see the Lovecraft circle as almost just like 1930s, 1920s version of, of uh, sort of a, a role-playing group, you know, but one mm-hmm. guy's in Texas, the other yeah. guy, you know, Rhode Island, the other one's in Auburn, California, you know. Yeah. I think uh, Ivan is Clark Ashton Smith's uh, author avatar. Cool. I, 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 I like that. I like that. That's pretty cool. I, I would definitely watch that movie that has Al Hazred, uh, Ibon, and Conan like trekking across someplace. Um, they don't. They do not exist in the same timelines. Just to let everyone know, uh, Al Hazred is like thousands of years later, and I believe Ibon is thousands of years before Conan. <laughs> yeah. So so it gets a little confusing. Sure. Yeah. Because they're not really trying to, to merge things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you're right. So, Ivan lives in a civilization. It's the Hyperborea. Yes. And Hyperborea is pre-Ice Age, Iceland, Greenland, <laughs> where uh, Conan is, lives in 
Hyboria, mm-hmm. uh, Hyborian, and it is a sort of Pangea, all the continents combined, yeah. uh, before uh, before uh, they broke up and Atlantis sings, mm-hmm. I mean mm-hmm. sinks. Yeah. So there really are two separate dimensions, but they are attached by Lovecraft, uh, especially... Uh, in the Lovecraft world, we're going to have the Book of Iba, which is going to survive and be mm-hmm. one of the most powerful books. Yeah. A- and we have, of course, uh, Robert E. Howard is going to contribute to the mythos with Arkham and, you know, uh, the thing on the roof. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, you know, the... Uh, Oh, the the book of the worm, devouring its mysteries, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, or or I'm um, the um, unspeakable cults. Yep. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. But he's not really going to completely bring Conan into this universe. Mm-hmm. It's mainly brought in by the authors. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's 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 pretty fun. It's pretty neat how everyone kind of did their thing, but their things. I mean, they all took place on Earth, just different epochs, and that's pretty cool. Uh, What else do we know about Ibon besides the fact that it is Clark Ashton Smith's stand-in? Ibon enjoyed uh, (laughs) sculpting and poetry, but Mm -hmm. Ibon also enjoyed uh, being being pretty badass when it came to magic. I mean, so much so that he was able to create a book uh, that is still sought after to this day. And we, we talked about the book before and uh, how it's written in several different languages, including French and Latin and Greek. But that's those are not languages that Ibon spoke. Ibon spoke some pre-human language that we don't know. I mean, it's like I'm trying to remember if Ibon is pre-human or if Ibon is like considered like human. So my memory and I'm sure we'll get a bunch of complaints here, is that he was a Hyperborean. Okay, all right. Which is a human being. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, that they were uh, maybe a little small, almost sort of a... a lot. What a lot of people think, I think, think Atlanteans would be like. Mm, okay, gotcha. Uh, and I, I'm trying to remember the one story that I kind of remember, and I think it's Ivan, which he, he gets like cursed and he, he ends up becoming in uh, like in a uh, oh a bottle of wine well you know at least it's good wine yeah yeah <laughs> all right so uh, I'm trying to think what else do we know about Ivan that we can really kind of uh, use to stretch this section out <laughs> um I know this isn't D&D on D&D but how would you use Ibon in an RPG, and what RPG would that be? So, I mean, he, he is... Well, he is... The book... Um, so, Clark Asher Smith mm-hmm. is going to be read by Gygax and the others. Oh, yeah. So, as I think as much as, say, Gandalf mm-hmm. is going to be the prototypical uh, D&D wizard, so is Ibon. Yeah, yeah. That, that he's going to be part of you know part of the DNA of what would Gygax and the others make as uh, D&D mm-hmm. yeah cool very cool and then it's sort of you know um, it goes to this, this, this pre-human society mm-hmm. and eventually it gets translated into uh, Kishite and Punic mm-hmm. and then Greek and then Latin and that's where we get uh, Lila Ivanis. Yes, yes. And that's supposed to be around the 10th or 11th century. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then in the 13th century it becomes you know the French version. Yeah. So, so I'm not quite sure and, and you know definitely I, I need to study Clark Ashton Smith, sure. especially his poetry, a lot uh-huh. better. Like you know, I know uh, Lovecraft or Howard, but you know, it leaves us open to the 13th century mm-hmm. and where we France, where we've got um, 
you know, his, his Avion story. Yeah. It can it tie in so where it can survive and make through to, to his Avion mm-hmm. and, and well into to now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I, I personally would, if, if I was going to use Ibon, it would just be in D&D. <laughs> That's the sorcerer. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, back to your question. Yeah, so he sort of is kind of, he, he would be, you know, the, the, the boss. Dude. He'd be the, the quest giver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or or you know, unless it is kind of like the door to Saturn kind of thing, where it's like you are tasked with like hunting down this this uh, sorcerer, uh, is 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 the way that I was going to do it, and and you know, you uh, take on the role of the people who track down and try to capture Ibon. Uh, maybe the uh, a next group, not the ones that necessarily went, because I don't, I can't remember. I think some of them didn't make it back. <laughs> but, you know, you have your initial group, uh, either whatever's left of them is found, or, you know, um, word makes it back to the king, who's like, hey, we need to get that guy. That, that guy has, like, that guy's in trouble. Uh... <laughs> Uh, he, he doesn't, uh, you know, care for Yondwai the way that we do, and he worships a thug or whatever. Uh, and, you know, just chase around, just kind of, like, explore. Uh, just, you know, uh, yeah, that's just my quick uh, explanation. All right. Well, uh, if you know more about Ibon that you think we should have covered, I, I highly recommend that you check out pgttcm.com and write us, a, write us a note. Or you can go to Facebook and look for People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos or Instagram People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos. And you can write us and be like, hey, you forgot all this stuff about Clark Ashton Smith and Ibon and you're saying it wrong and he's saying it right. And I can't find that episode about the Book of Ibon. Is it still out there? And, you know, pgttcm.com. And... So, so one last sort of oh, Ibon. Yeah. Go for it. Ibon is also a planet in the Star Wars universe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so what I'm thinking, just and, you know, like, well, you, you know what, what Endor is, right? Oh, no, I don't. So Endor is a area in Jerusalem. Oh. So, so, so that's where the name comes from. Okay. So, and there's the famous story, you know, where I believe it's Saul in the Bible mm-hmm. goes to the witch of Endor, who brings back the, like the spirit of Solomon or one of the other spirits, mm-hmm. and, and so that's where, you know, presumably George Lucas got the term Endor for the moon of Endor. Gotcha. It's from the, the witch of Endor. Okay. Which is a story in the Bible. Nice. So, but what I was saying, that part of the universe uh-huh. that Ibon is in, mm-hmm. I don't know if specifically Ibon, but that section really was started, invented by the West End Games. Gotcha. A role-playing game. And so I have an absolutely no doubt. I mean, there's always a possibility. Oh, wow, this is a cool word. I think I made up. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it did. This, way. but I have a feeling that if it was gamers yeah. in the '80s that made this planet Ibon, mm-hmm. then it would be that they knew what they were talking about. They yeah. knew what they were naming it after. Yeah, I saw that uh, when I was doing research before, and I assumed it was either from the Marvel comics where people would have read Clark Ashton Smith or from the RPG where from people who had read Clark Ashton Smith and I was like oh yeah so but, so the sector of space that it came in was first invented mm-hmm. by the role playing game yeah. I'm not sure that Ibon itself but I suspect it was because of because that sector was came from the role playing game sure sure yeah cool um, yeah, and that's Ibon, but hey, do you want to talk about Star Wars for a few moments? I would love to talk about Star Wars. What have, are you saying about Star Wars? Have, have you checked out the Book of Boba Fett at all? Yes, I have. What, what, what are your thoughts on it? So, the first one was okay. Mm-hmm. The second episode was as good as any episode of The Mandalorian. Sure, yeah. Um, and then, you know, the third one 
was good. Yeah. It, 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 it was good, but you know, it wasn't as high a great as the second one. Sure, sure. And then the fourth one, Boba Fett. The, it, uh, spoilers: the fourth episode of the Book of Boba Fett is severely lacking in books and Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it, it's basically, you know, let you know what Mandalorian's been yep. doing. Um, so spoilers, want my prediction? I haven't seen the fifth one yet. It came out oh. today, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's, or is it the fifth or sixth? So I think there's like today and two more. Mm-hmm. So my prediction, you ready? Go for it. The Nico bikers did not kill the Tuscan tribe. Ooh. Uh, my theory is uh, the Tuscan, um, and oh, I'll talk about that later. Uh, 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 my, my, my theory is is that uh, of the tribe that uh, Boba Fett was hanging out with, the one that had like the dark like braid kind of cloth, we never saw her body or the child's body or the dog's body or the, the no. animal's body. So I'm I'm thinking uh, she might join up with his cadre of cool dudes. Um, yeah, and, and, and who uses slaves? Uh, the hut. The Pikes. Oh, the Pikes. The Pikes. That's I true. Think, that's I think true. The Pikes, I think the Pikes did it to to get uh, Boba Fett to kill them off. Yeah, yeah. And I think that the Pikes are there for some reason uh, that has something to do with why Tatooine doesn't have water anymore. I know that the reason Tatooine doesn't have water anymore has been decanonized and they keep bringing it up, but they don't tell you why. And I think that has something to do with why the Pikes are there, who are an aquatic race. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I, and, and I have to say that one of my favorite ca- uh, comic book characters has made an appearance. Oh, who's that? Black Christensen. Oh, okay. So he was originally in the Marvel. Uh, you know, we're talking about that huge yeah. uh, Wookiee. Yeah. So he was originally as Boba Fett's partner in the Darth Vader comic books after uh, yeah. Marvel took over again. Yeah, yeah. And then he became, for lack of a better word, the sidekick and assistant to Dr. Alpha. Gotcha. And so we're always hoping, though, maybe this is going to lead to a Dr. Alpha appearance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, I, I personally, I like the slow, drawn-out nature of the Boba Fett stories. People are like, that's not what Boba Fett's like. Boba Fett's fat now. Uh, It's such a slow story. Boba Fett wouldn't do that. Boba Fett wouldn't do this. And my thoughts are, we've only seen a little bit of canon Boba Fett. Like, stories from the books don't exist anymore. Tales from the Cantina is not canon. And there's a lot of stuff from old comic books that isn't canon anymore. And it's like, Boba Fett wouldn't do that. Boba Fett wouldn't do that. It's like, well, new people are writing Boba Fett. And because of how old the actor is and that they're using that actor and not the guy who played the young Boba Fett 20 years ago, you know, I mean, maybe that the guy who played young Boba Fett just couldn't physically do it and isn't a stunt person like the guy who plays Boba Fett. (laughs) And something I love about this show is um, because so many people wear masks and so many people, you know, faces are covered throughout this you have people who are normally stunt performers playing main characters, and that's that's super cool. Uh, and and also, uh, there was a scene recently where they go to most not most Eisley, but um, Toshi no, Station, that. and they actually oh, use uh, what Toshi Station looked like from the deleted scenes, and had Luke's friends from the deleted scenes Can't in Toshi it. Station. Uh, so. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. I was like, "Oh my god, that's no, supposed no, to be that Cammy." Was, that, was, that was a that was a deep cut. Yeah, yeah, that was a deep cut. That that was for all the people who read Star Wars Insider in the nineties. <laughs> anyway, um, so up next we've got Sean Hode, uh, gonna be here talking to Dave. And what 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 do you and Sean talk about? Well, so it really isn't an interview, but it's a conversation. Uh, you know, uh, Sean unfortunately had some medical situations a couple of years back and he's finally getting back into the, the, the writing game yeah. a little bit about that in fact uh, you know uh, when when we did the recording he had to be in a, a room with green light to okay. get headaches and stuff sure. so a little bit about that but also you know the role of a horror writer or a horror reader in the 
in our horrific world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear it and edit it. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sean. I uh, met him a few times here and there at Lovecraft Things and, uh, yeah, once at Wizard World. And, yeah, so here's Sean, and we'll be back in a few, and we're going to be talking about little town in western Massachusetts known as Dunwich. All right, we'll see you after the break. Thank you once again for listening to People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos. You can help show your support by going to the show notes and following any of the links that'll tell you how to support the show and how to support our guests. And thank you to all of our guests who you can find in the show notes. Rate, review, subscribe. And remember, patrons get priority access to asking us questions, suggesting topics, even, I don't know, uh, submitting stuff. Actually, you don't have to be a patron to submit anything. That's how Dave got on the show, and that's how you can get on the show, too. It's the People's Guide to the Cthulhu Mythos. Rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends. Thank you for listening. Back to the show. So this is the part of the show where I talk to somebody who's not me and not DB. And today I am really excited because I've got a really good friend that I haven't talked to in a while. Too and long. that is Sean Hode. Hey there. Sean, why don't you tell a little bit, tell uh, people listening a little bit about who you are? Yeah, great. Uh, well, it's so great to talk to you, man. Uh, I am um, a writer and former professor and creative writing teacher and all that good stuff. Uh, and I'm the author of uh, Cthulhu Attacks, uh, book one, and also a Dead Town Abbey, uh, uh, um, a Lovecraftian take on, on Downton Abbey, and some other stuff and anthologies and things. And I have been uh, a guest, uh, lucky enough to be a guest at the H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival over several years. And... Uh, and just uh, writing and working with people on on some uh, visual projects that they're doing and things like that. And but uh, one of the things that uh, you and I were talking about right before we went on the air here was um, that I have uh, been sick for a while and starting in, a, in like kind of early 2017 and uh, and uh, with a neurological uh, issue and uh, from which I am thankfully emerging now thanks to some great meds and therapy and stuff and. Um, so I had to completely leave the any scene for a number of years, and I couldn't work. It was very sad. Uh, however, yeah, yeah, you couldn't really <laughs> even spend a lot of time on on things like Facebook either, could you? Exactly. It's like all of my social things uh, went away because I was so ill, and that was so it was like a triple whammy. However, however, and it's so great that you. I mean, you just kind of contacted me a little bit out of the blue, I, I suppose. I mean, you and I always keep in contact, but. Uh, and it's just come that I'm, I'm uh, now, thanks to these things, I'm able to be on screens more now. And you never realize how much of life is screens. Jeez, so you can't use them. And uh, Matt Wiseman with uh, Shoggoth.net said, hey, Sean, do you, want, do you want to write some stuff for me? And I'm like, I, you know, and, and I've been talking with you about anthologies. And, you know, we talked about this stuff. And I have always wanted to do it again, but I couldn't be on screens long enough to write. And now I'm doing it. And so it's kind of revitalized uh, everything. So so I'm a writer and a teacher and hopefully friend friend to all in the Lovecrafting community. Excellent, excellent. In fact, you know, that's where you and I first met when I went to my first. Uh, it wasn't the Lovecraft Film Festival. It was one of the... Uh, Cthulhu Con, the uh, important oh, in fact, right. it was the first one. First one, it was held in, in a hotel. It was uh, when they did uh, two. They did the film festival, and then yeah. in the middle of the year, they would do uh, the the Cthulhu Con. I totally forgot to differ- differentiate those. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. That's right. Yeah. So so excellent. So you actually um, quite a few things. You've got quite a few stories about the the main character being. Uh, Nikola Tesla. Oh yeah. Uh, you you also have uh, some very I love uh, science fiction uh, <laughs> almost parodies. Uh, pew pew. Oh yeah. Uh, was it space explosions? Pew pew pew. 
Um, yes. <laughs> originally published, by the way, the, uh, as it was called, a terrible title uh, by uh, 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 Severed Press, which is awesome, uh, called uh, War Thug. And then there was War Thug 2, which became uh, pew, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Space Explosions 2 Pew Pew Boogaloo. That became so those were fun. And <laughs> and Tesla stuff, uh, I started doing those Penny Dreadfuls. Um, I had, uh, what was it? Nikola Tesla versus the Daylight Vampires and Nikola Tesla meets the Slender Man. Uh, you like those, I think, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, those were lots of fun. Just it's such an interesting character to write about. And then almost any everything with his life is so entwined with fact and fiction and stuff we're not sure which one it is. He just is the perfect protagonist for kind of crazy, crazy fiction, weird fiction. Yeah, I, you know, it, I used to, before I knew a lot about him, I used to describe him as America's real mad scientist. Yes. I mean, really, you know, and it's funny because he came from, uh, he, you know, he, he came from like Croatia, you know, Croatia, Serba, right? Serba, right. Croatia. Croatia. And, but he was more American than a lot of us. I mean, he really took the American dream, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So can, can you talk about some of your new projects or is this a little too early? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, not really, because it's uh, I'm doing some different stuff. I'm doing well, I'm doing a story, a serialized story right now called 52 with an exclamation point, which for those of you who are math, math geeks, um, it's 52 factorial and there's a deck of cards involved. So that might give you a little bit of what we're <laughs> what we're talking about there. But um, it's really I've been it really the uh, with that it, and some other stuff I'm working on is kind of getting into a little bit past um, past uh, just like, you know, bleh, scary, you know, monsters in the corner, which are plenty scary to more of the existential, really the existential terror of even the the sort of there there are things that are around us all the time that we never realize this uh, sort of imminence in um, uh, terror just that is sitting right there that because of how our minds work who we are as humans completely it would make a uh, make us crap ourselves if we ever really realized it you know yeah no and uh, and I think we t- we kind of talked a little bit about this before mm-hmm. we went on the air mm-hmm. uh, so, some bad things have happened in the last couple of years. I, I, I noticed that, that. lightly, but some, I, <laughs> and, and 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 so you know, and I'll tell you, there's I'm gonna I, I don't mean to bring this up, but I'll tell you, the most horrific thing I ever heard mm-hmm. is not fiction. <laughs> yeah, and and that's when the the crime scene investigators oh no went in to the Pulse nightclub. Oh, for, down was that Orlando? Yes, yes, so and and, yeah. and all the people were trying to get a hold of their their friends and family, and and they would just and yeah. they just carried the phones going over and over while they were documenting the crime scene. That is the most, oh, you know, and I, I that's 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 pure horror to me. Well, it so, is, and oh, go ahead. No, no, I was say. Uh, how how does how does written horror sort of? I, it's not a competition, but but uh, what right. is the role of, of of horror writing in a situation like a world like this? Right, right, and and we're of two minds on this, right? Because there's one where it's like we absolutely should not be talking about people. Uh, you know, whether they're getting ripped apart by Charles Dexter Ward or would monster, you know, whatever. Um, you know, it's like, well, we shouldn't be doing that because look how much real life horror there is. Right. And then and this is hardly original to me. But but there's also the no, this is exactly when we do need this so that we can so that we can carry on when we see these horrors. We can carry on because we are not not desensitizing ourselves to it, but understanding that these are things that have to be dealt with that can't be understood. You know, it's like someone, yes, they're horrible, whether they're just uh, anti whatever, you know, homophobe, anti trans, whatever, you know, racist, whatever, that these people are willing to do the worst things that are possible to do. Right. Well, how do we deal with that without going nuts? Well, we can go and and sort of we can feel, quote, you know, horror in other ways that are almost like amusing. And so so we don't have to take everything even though something is really serious, we can look at other stuff and say, well, this is unexplainable, but this is something I can deal with on this level, you know? So it's like, I mean, it's not unexplainable that someone is a horrible person, but 
uh, but it's it's that we can maybe okay well at least I I know that this isn't the uh, do you know what I'm saying it's like the yeah. real life thing is bad and is hard right but there's nothing <clears throat> we can we can't really process that because real life has no structure it has no if uh, to be honest meaning in it in itself whereas in fiction we go in there and and we go oh okay well the you know Cthulhu did go back to sleep and now we have time to deal with this or whatever we, uh, we have you know whatever monster this was was able to be shot and taken care of even though no one believes this you know we can we can put structure on it where we don't have that in something like the pulse Nine R- R- Ripley threw the alien into the the yeah. engine or or yeah. you know Friday the 13th you know like Jason gets killed until the next movie right and then it's like oh we'll get him again oh he'll get it back you know but it's 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 under our control in a certain way Even, but here's the thing also though and here's something with the I'm just gonna use the pulse neck of course is something that's hard but anybody blows something off or does something horrible right based on this stuff it's like that person is still the person who did it right is still a person which means yeah. that we have much more in common with them than less right and so this yeah. goes into the heart of what makes some especially the Innsmouth stuff to me with Lovecraft just uh, it never ever ever gets old to me because what he's doing is he's uh, what he, what Lovecraft does in that and what we have when we look at something like these horrible people is like you know what is that in me is that even if I don't do anything about it or I never do anything that you know does anything is that is this horrible fearsome unholy you know abomination thing i say is this inside of me as well and so and so lovecraft in that way gives us a chance to to deal with the fears that there but for the grace of satan or something you know go i yeah you know exactly and and i think we'll kind of um on this you know i i I hate it when somebody does something terrible like this and, and and it's absolutely terrible when they call them monsters they're not monsters. Uh-huh. They're people who chose to do evil. That's the thing. And, That's uh, the difference. Yeah. The, the shark in Jaws is a monster because it doesn't know any better. The alien in <laughs> Alien is a monster because it can't be anything but an alien. These I mean, are people so who alien. chose to do evil. Yeah, and it's and it's funny because you said about the shark uh, being alien, right? Sharks are one of the most alien uh, creatures on Earth that we could... That that uh, that we can recognize, you know, like certain kinds of sea slugs. They're not monsters, but I mean, they're so alien, right? But yeah. truly, truly alien, uh, truly alien uh, creatures. Like, oh, I mean, not truly, but like a shark, right? Well, all they're doing is what they're supposed to be doing. You know, it's like it's like well, sharks attack things that look like food, right? Um, and uh, even though this time it's personal, right, with part four, but um, <laughs> but it's like yeah, and so are we. What part of the monster are we, right? I mean, yeah. uh, and and that, yeah, you're absolutely right. But to call a monster says, I could never be like that, and then, right, is what you're saying, I think. And then, well, yes, you certainly could be like that. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I think horror does let us sort of address, mm-hmm. and, and, and again, I don't want to, t- I don't think, it allows us to address the concepts of fear, Mm-hmm. But not lessen or lighten the real <laughs> terrible things. Right, right. Uh, and it's it, I agree with that totally. And it's interesting. I read somewhere, and I've always I've found this interesting that horror, the horror genre, is the only genre named for its effect. Yeah. Romance is about romance, right? Adventure is going on an adventure, but horror is feeling horror. And I remember Ross Lockhart. Um, saying in a, a one of the panels one time on one of the cons he said you know nothing really scares me in fiction anymore no fiction or movies or anything really scares me anymore and but i'll bet and i believe that because russ is a longtime editor and you know all this stuff and writer and everything but i bet things in real life cause him a lot of horror and now yeah. he's lost that and i'm not speaking for ross or anything but i bet that that he's lost a little bit of outlet for that and i'm wondering if with all of the horrors of the past couple of years right um, 5.6 million, I think, have died now of COVID. Um, a, a, with all the horrors, I wonder. I should ask him. You know, what's his outlet? You know, how do we how do we have safe fear in this time of intense horrid fear? No, a- absolutely. And, and and something else that I was thinking, and, and and we sort of had some idea, but we weren't really planning this sort of the interview. 
But not only is it a safe fear, mm -hmm. it's safe to share. Yeah. Yeah, fun it, it, to share. It's a communal experience. I mean, you could watch a horror movie alone, and that really there, so, there's something scary about watching a horror movie alone. Uh, yeah. But there's <laughs> something about watching a horror movie with other people where yeah. it's safe to let our guards down. Yes, I noticed when I, I totally agree. I noticed that when I'm watching a horror movie uh, by myself. I have a tendency if there's you know jumps you know there's jump scares and then there's the you know harrowing existential yeah. thing right but uh, a jump scare I will f word a lot okay but if I'm watching it with somebody else I'll laugh a lot the scarier yeah. it is the more I laugh not because it's funny as such but because it's funny how scary it is and how silly yeah. that you feel with another person but when I'm by myself though I just I'm like not scared scared but certainly anxious. Yeah, and, and, and laughter and humor is sort of a release that that, that yeah. you can share. So, yeah, you know, I can, I, I absolutely love my daughters. My my youngest daughter mm -hmm. and I have this love for news and history. Uh huh. But I can't really be completely open with her if we're watching the news. I've got yeah. to be the parent. I can't let her see. What I'm seeing on that news scares me completely. I mean, oh. I'm honest with her, but yeah. I can't. I don't feel I can share that. I uh, can no, I... share that if we're watching a zombie movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so I can, I can be, oh, and, and I'm not saying lie to your children about the things you see on the news, no. but there's part of me that I've got to be a parent. I've got to be the strong person. I well, don't have to do that if we're watching a zombie movie. No, and you can tell them the truth about a zombie movie, even if you're saying, you know, like, let's say they're old enough to know zombies aren't, well, I don't think, really real, right? Yeah. Well, when, why, then, Dad, why is it, why is this scary? I know this isn't real. Well, you can talk about that, right? But also you can make sense of it, where you watch something like these horrible things on the news or what some of the politicians are doing, things like that. It's like, oh, my God, this is so scary and horrible, Daddy. Explain this to me. And you can't. <laughs> You know, it's like, exactly. it's just how it, I mean, how often can you say to your, to your young one, it's like, uh, you know, the world isn't always a great place. I mean, they know that, but they want explanation. And when we watch like a zombie movie, well, you know, that I have my book that zombie school confidential about zombies and how they affect popular culture and things, or I mean, how they reflect it. I mean, and, um, you can go, well, this is because, I mean, and before, before, um, uh, COVID came. I had been saying for years, the next zombie thing, you know, zombie movies are starting to be about how every, they had the running zombies, everybody were packed together, right? And now, you know, unfortunately, we've got this. But it's like you can go, oh, see, zombies are talking about our fears about this other thing. Cthulhu, as far as we know, isn't real, but it he, he, I guess, has so much to do with our fears of otherness and, and invasion and imminent, as far as uh, with an A, you know, like imminent uh, just scariness. You know, yeah. just in Cthulhu doesn't even do anything in that story in Call of Cthulhu. He doesn't do anything. He he wakes up for a minute, right? But everything else that happens, and that's where I got Cthulhu attacks from. Well, what if he actually did rise, you know, and start doing things? But even in that book, he doesn't really do anything. He just moves, you know. And it's like, yeah. but that though is one of those things to me that's more like, uh, sort of like something you'd see in the news. It's like we can't really explain it. It's just horrible, just by the fact that it exists. And we were scared of it and hope it goes away. But yeah. Exactly. You know, and I, I was thinking, you know, I can tell my daughter, you know, it's as absolutely terrible that Glenn died in The Walking Dead. He's my favorite character, too. Uh, oh, by the way, do you know that the real guy is now being nominated for an Academy Award? You know what? The young Asian fellow? I thought he, he was on he was on some Academy Award wow. winning movie or something. Oh, but I don't know if he awesome. got the role. But but that's but that's it. Awesome. He's still alive. We can talk about him. You know. Oh, I see. So so we can talk. He, he it's terrible that he died, but the actor is succeeding. He's lucky he didn't die when he left that car alarm all on on the, all the way back from Atlanta or whatever in the like third episode or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he, <laughs> nah, he he got like hit by a baseball bat or something. Yeah. Oh, but you know something else actually about Walking Dead. I'm glad you brought that up. Is um, that's really interesting though. But uh, oh, I hope I didn't derail your thought about your daughter. But but the thing about the young the young man there, um, Stephen, I think his name is, is uh, the actor. Is that yeah? Uh, oh, it, Walking Dead. I mean, is that uh, Walking Dead? After a while, and I really like this about it. It became about the banality of the post-apocalypse. And one of the things people say about 
uh, COVID time, it, other than, of course, people are dying. That's horrible. But it's how incredibly boring it's been because we can't do things. Yeah. And so once again, zombie fiction has, you know, stepped in and, and shown us what's what in a way. Yeah, no, no. And yeah, so no, definitely um, we're not the same people we were a decade ago. We're not no. the same people we were four years ago. Uh, no, <laughs> I think I know what you might be referring to. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we. It's been. It's been. It's such a dark time. And the thing is, with they, they say you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, things come and go or whatever. But the arc, the long arc, is towards justice. Have you ever heard that? No. The arc, the arc tends towards justice. But the problem is, is that's when there's resources. You know, we can have increasing. You know, since the middle. You know, since the 1500s, whatever things have been getting better like that. But my fear is that is that we're getting we're yeah you know, we're in America we're pretty shielded for a while, but resources are starting to run out, and this is when the real horror uh, is going to be is going to be coming. I think, and when there's real horror in the world, right? Well, like in the old days, what do we do? We tell each other ghost stories. We try to give each other little uh, little things to laugh about with the fear while we're afraid of the other things. And I think that just horror is just incredibly, just incredibly valuable. I, 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 I absolutely, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and I think that's, I think that's why, you know, and, and we, we've been telling ghost stories, you're right, since, you know, we were cavemen. Right, right. And, you know, I, it... It helps us get through. It, I mean, it really does. It helps us. Look, we'll just, we'll have a, a, and it also, it sort of girds your loins, if you will, a little bit for the things that kids have to face. And because kids, why do kids love, kids love being, you know, scared so much? Well, they like that kind of, you know, I mean, like, anyway, they like that kind of scared, you know, it, it's like, it's, it's fun scared. And, and that's one of the reasons why I love Halloween is Halloween is the only holiday that teaches children irony. Because they go, yeah. oh, it's a scary thing, but it's not really scary, you know. Oh, he's gonna eat your face. It's not really gonna eat your face, you know that sort of thing. But all the other holidays are, are almost sickeningly uh, straightforward. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, there's spiders. Well, they're not really spiders, but you should still be scared of them because it's scary. It's fun to be scared, you know. No, absolutely, absolutely, ab- ab- absolutely, and and <laughs> Halloween takes our affairs. Mm-hmm. And let's just have fun with it. Have fun with it and, and make fun of it. And B, you can be scary and get scared at the same time on Halloween, which is nice. You know, because like, look, I'm a vampire. You're not people are really scared of vampires, you know, but I'm a, I'm a monster or whatever. And the other person's a monster, and we're, ah, ah, you know, and, and it's fun. But it's like what we, you and I do and, and what the people uh, listen here, where they appreciate it, whether they appreciate it or they're creators or whatever. It's like we get to play in the sandbox. That's what they would say about uh, Lovecraft stuff, right? Um, we get to play in the sandbox and, and um, I'm hoping that we can scare Ross again someday. Uh, but, um, you know, I really like to read something to be really, to be really scared. Uh, one of the scariest books that I've read, it was, it's a trilogy in the past, I don't know, five years, probably wasn't a horror book at all. It was, it was called, uh, the last policeman series. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, it sounds familiar. It, yeah, it's, it's not about policemen or anything, but it's, it's about, um, they've discovered that this asteroid, you know, a planet killing asteroid is headed for us. And, it's like, you know, a year and a half in advance, and uh, this person has uh, always wanted to be a policeman, always wanted to be a detective, and people start quitting their jobs because the world's going to end, you know, I mean, like, really going to end, and, yeah. uh, and, and so he gets to become a detective just as all this stuff is happening, and, and no one cares, like, why are you even investigating crimes? Who cares? You know, he's like, well, I care. So, anyway, but it is just fantastic, and it's, it's scary. The story itself isn't scary, although it does show the darkness in the hearts of men, which is always scary. But as far as just like, yeah, what if it's all over, man? Uh, and it was just very, very well done and scary. I don't know if I'm going too far afield. He also has a no, straight no. up. I'll have so to check them his, out. You really do. They're great. They're on uh, Kindle, you know, Unlimited and stuff. Uh, although they're, they're Ben Winters is his name. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're not on Kindle. Well, they're, anyway, they're not expensive. But um, what I was going to say was uh, that he does have a uh, straight up horror novel or two. It's one called Bed Bugs, which I am not reading. And I, I do not think I'll ever stop itching if I read that book. I could understand that. You know, <laughs> but uh, but that's one of those things, right? It's scary. It's scary to me 
And then it was funny, my wife and I were talking about it because we did a reread last year. Uh, she loves those too. Um, with uh, COVID we, uh, around March, when, or not last year, but I guess the year before when COVID was just really starting to rage. And we happened to be rereading it because I really love this book. And we're like, wow, this is taking on a different kind of flavor, hasn't it? You know, with the uh, world ending sort of stuff. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, so, but yeah, no, I think that Halloween helps us. I think that just scariness, uh, practice scariness helps us with the real stuff and helps us feel like we can have put some structure, have some understanding of the things that, that happen. And also, and, I think and, and a little like, bit of control over the narrative. Yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah, control over the narrative and, and people like you and me, and this is why Lovecraft gives us such a great uh, gift with his letting us play in his sandbox and, and his contemporaries, not just since he's passed, you know, uh, is that is that we get to work, because he had these incredibly evocative ideas, right? And then he did whatever he did with the story, but, with stories, which were great, but then we get to f- explore them even more fully and, and literally take, take uh, control of the narrative, which is lots of fun. Yeah. It's the break, it's the break. It's time for you to hear about Glary Guitars. Glary Guitars, check out the show notes right now. Save 5% on a Glary... uh, Okay, so it's not a Gibson 335 uh, semi-hollow, but it's a a good knockoff. It's an amazing knockoff for under uh, $190, under $200. It's $189.99 or something like that, but still... Uh, it's it's a steal for a guitar, and uh, you know if you tell people how much you got it for, they'll assume that it's stolen. So check out what Glary has going on in the show notes. And hey, you know and, what? But it's not a steel guitar. It's it's not a steel guitar. No, it's certainly not a pedal steel guitar. Uh, it's it's a steal of a deal. Uh, Copper Cow Coffee is so good. Vietnamese style pour over. Why don't you have a cup of Copper Cow? They've got a discount going on right now. If you go to the link in the show notes, you can get a discount for Tet. Which I don't know if Tet has passed by the time that this this episode yeah, has. Uh, I believe that Tet was yesterday. Oh, Dag Nabbit. Well, they're going to have Valentine's Day specials too. So check out. And you know what? It, it, contact me. I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with a discount. I've done that for listeners in the past. Especially if you send in puns, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set you up with a discount. Uh, Cthulhu Mythos, please. But hey, if you've got a good pun that you want to send in, a good joke, we'll, we'll accept it. And yeah, uh, welcome back to the show, everyone. This is DB with Farmer Dave. Uh, we can be found on all the social medias, except for Tumblr, because Tumblr's dumb. And <laughs> um, Dave, Dave, uh, what's what's new with you? How's everything at the farm these days? Uh, it is going good. We've got about um, two more months. We'll start kidding season. Okay, cool. And that's when you'll end up with kids in the house, as in uh, baby goats all over your house? Quite often. Okay. Okay. Quite often, <laughs> little goats on the roof, yep. and you know. Yeah, and if you thought Roy was chatty, wait till kidding season, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Ralph the rooster, not Roy the rooster. Yeah, I, yeah, Ralph. Yeah, wait, wait until kidding season. Yep. And uh, yeah, so Dunwich, Dunwich, Massachusetts. That's. Uh, we're, we're talking about Dunwich, Massachusetts, or, or a place like this, using in your role-playing campaign, whether it be Dungeons & Dragons, Shadowrun, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Vampire the Masquerade, you could do something maybe in your... I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking of uh, other RPGs off the top of my head, and I'm failing. Boot Hill! <laughs> but I'm, Dunwich is... Uh, where if you turn off the road at the wrong spot, you're going to end up somewhere you don't want to be. Um, there's not a lot of services. There's not a lot of anything. There's a general store. Uh, the roads aren't maintained. In fact, the roads are dirt and pretty ruddy and muddy. Uh, the houses are dilapidated. Uh, people don't come out to greet you. Uh, there might be some people at the general store, but they don't want you sticking around. Uh, anything else you want to throw in about like a place like Dunwich? Well, so, so 
done it done with or, or done it mm-hmm. um you know i imagine that it, it, it's done which but the, the locals call it done it yeah a- and you know the done which horror um in a lot of ways i think captures that period of time mm-hmm. uh you know depression the depression era east coast and, and i get that some of this is written before some of lovecraft stuff lovecraft's country uh-huh. sort of and some of it's absolutely before depression oh, yeah. but in the same way that you know um that that things like the Grapes of Wrath captured California Depression era. Yeah. That these towns, real towns, were disappearing at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I think, and, and you know, Lovecraft, we, you know, we are, well, yeah, Lovecraft was definitely a racist, but he was also very much a classist. Yeah. And he was very sort of a lot, a lot of ways he writes down to these poor white people. Yeah. Um, and so it definitely, maybe not the most accurate, especially, but it's, it's, it's a, a vision of what that area was during the 20s and 30s. Mm-hmm. The, these areas didn't get all the benefits say Boston or Providence or even Arkham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so of course, the the best, I mean, there's actual books out there, entire adventures mm-hmm. of Don Witch for, you know, the Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't believe that Dunwich has any real industry in its town. I think maybe some farms, but nothing that really produces anything to help build the town. So I, I think actually, like, Dunwich is probably safer to go to than Innsmouth, but I think Innsmouth is more developed because of the fact that it is a town that still makes quite a bit of money. I mean, I've got to assume that the hotel and the grocery store had electricity. Um, but I don't think there's anything, like, any amenities really in Dunwich. It's kind of like a, man, y'all don't even have a garage? You don't have a gas station? Okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> no and one has so, a phone? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and so there were lots of these cities Oh yeah, that were built in the late 1800s mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that they have so they've got this very sort of a boom time yeah so they're yeah. gonna have this very advanced architecture and then come to the 20s and the 30s the rest of the city that builds around them are, are gonna be much cheaper quality yeah yeah and also this is a period of time before the United States really kind of pushed for a I don't know, uh, across the board, everyone having electricity and running water. I mean, there's still parts of the country where communities don't have running water and stuff like that. But this was a period of time where a lot of communities may have not had running water just based on the fact that they were poor communities. Um, Pre-TVA. Yeah, yes, yes, thank you. Pre-TVA. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, once that, I mean, uh, there's there's some really great uh, American propaganda about like, hey, uh, put up fences, uh, get water, get electricity, wires straight to your house to have electric uh, lamplight. You know, um, just kind of like, a, you know, your children will be better if you have running water in your house, uh, <laughs> less uh, less infant mortality. Uh, you know. That kind of stuff. And, you know, showing, like, healthy people and healthy animals and stuff. And and, and it, uh, first time I saw those, it made me think of Dunwich and, like, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I know some of it is, a, you know, in Lovecraft's mind, it may have been a bit of an exaggeration or stories that he'd heard or places that he'd seen. But uh, definitely places he drove through. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, I think uh, in any kind of campaign setting, you can have a place like this, whether it be like some barrens outside of Seattle for Shadowrun, where like no one has tech, um, there isn't 
any tech or maybe not any electricity or anything like that and or you know it's 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 the part where it's like you can't even hook up to the matrix anywhere out there it's 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 the boonies it's it's like off grid and not able to be incorporated onto the grid maybe for some sort of geological reasons that cause some rumblings which we haven't even gotten to the rumbles of dunwich the noise yes. The noise, which is based on the noise of modus. Yeah, the modus noise, which their high school is uh, their high school team is the noise. I found out while doing research last month. Uh, yes, so 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 definitely, uh, S. T. Joshi believes, and I have no de- reason to doubt his research on this. Mm-hmm. That the noise of this rumbling is based on a real event, mm-hmm. which are probably caused by micro earthquakes. Yeah, yeah. So, so absolutely. Um, and here's the other fun thing. Mm-hmm. Areas like this? Yeah. No cell service. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was so, also... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know, you, you got, you're doing a modern campaign or something, and, and, and you know, what's to prevent you if you're calling 911 on your cell phone? Well... Yeah. It's got to be a place, a place like this. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, the place like this doesn't have to be the scary part. That's the initial scary part. Like, oh, that's the first layer of the onion. If we're going to go with a Sandy Peterson uh, analogies, um, first layer of the onion, you end up in a town with no electricity, uh, no running water, and like just dirt roads everywhere. They have like store. They have a store, but you know. That's that's it. They don't even have refrigeration because they don't have electricity. Only refrigeration they have is maybe some uh, root cellars and maybe a cave that everyone uses to store stuff. Um, maybe you have to go and search for, is, is there anyone around here that has anything and be like, oh yeah, so-and-so on this farm. You have to go through here and down there and cross through this field and then across that creek over there. There's a, a forest service uh, outpost that you could go to. There's a, a fire watch station. You know, maybe that's like the closest place, but you have to figure out where it's at. And maybe the directions weren't that good, or maybe they just straight up lied to you so that you end up on some uh, cut rate sorcerer's uh, backyard and end up getting fed to his uh, kid in the attic. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, go on. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's, there's like, I don't know. Yeah. Dunwich itself isn't problematic. I mean, okay. Yeah. You can. It can be problematic. But like, the people in Dunwich don't want anything to do with the Waitleys. Some of them are related to the Waitleys. Some of them know what the Waitleys have been up to in the past because they were part of that family and they've sworn off. These can be your people who go, oh yeah, there's this guy way out there and he's like screaming about this all the time. Stay away from that. Um, but if you go over here, you're going to find this and this and this. And eh, what if what if the guy at the store mixed up the two places? Because he's, he's old. He's been drinking moonshine or whatever oh, yeah. else thing you want to pin on these people because... I don't know. I, I I don't think it's great to be like, oh yeah, they're out in the woods, they're hillbillies, and they're ignorant. It's like, well, social economic situations. But hey, we're playing role playing games, so we're dumbing stuff down for horror. So <laughs> yeah, and, and so one one of the things that always sort of grabbed me in the story, sure, was that there were monoliths on the hill. Yeah, yeah, Sentinel Hill. Something else we need to talk about. Yeah. And Lovecraft, to his credit, uh-huh. credits those to Native Americans. Yeah. But what is always sort of I connected, and what I did use in one of my uh, Warehouse 13 games, uh-huh. is Salem, New Hampshire. Okay. Which is America's Stonehenge. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so... And, and yeah, honestly, Mystery Hill or American Stonehenge mm-hmm. are these very old rock buildings that were built in the middle of nature. Yeah. Uh, and I don't like evidence. Uh, you know, people say, well, that's proof that, that, that uh, you know, the Jews were in America 2,000 years ago. Yeah. To me, I kind of think 
that they were probably as built in, you know, during revolutionary times or maybe afterwards. Sure. But I had, I wanted, and underneath, I had it, I used uh, sort of combined the monolith from the black stone uh-huh. and uh you know uh, the what's underneath the mound and the mound and i put it underneath in the in the american stonehenge sure and so this is this is a great place to combine that and you could set that in a dnd setting oh, you yeah. could do that in a you know, I, I was doing it in a modern setting. Uh, you could do it in a revolutionary war setting. Oh, yeah. In the 20s. Uh, you know, so I think that's another way. And that part about the, the monoliths there, mm-hmm. um, Lovecraft, it, it was an excellent job, but it's almost a throwaway. Does it, it's not really, other than the fact that we know that there's something weird, I've yeah. uh, been on Sentinel Hill for a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm a throwaway it doesn't add much to the story no but i think it opens a lot for for gaming ideas yeah i i think it it does add something to the story as it is like a mystery that is never brought up again it's i don't know um kind of like when you put just a little bit of nutmeg into food and people are like oh what is that what is that it's not a main thing it's not pronounced you're not gonna get a big chunk of it and go oh that's what it is it's not it's never gonna have any any uh fulfilling answer to what is that it's it you know it just keeps you going and enjoying what you have uh you can always ask the chef hey what was that ex- what, what was so special about that you can be like oh nutmeg it's like this is a terrible analogy monoliths or nutmeg all right <laughs> okay. Okay. And, 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 and it's definitely something that because it's not really touched in lovecraft uh-huh. A writer or a game master, you got, you got full right to make whatever the heck you oh, want. Sure, to. yeah, totally, totally. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the the rumblings aren't ever explained, so that's something fun to go with. The monoliths aren't ever explained, that's something fun to go with. Uh, what happens to the Waitley Farm afterwards? That's not really spoken of. I mean, the story's not about that. Um, there's there's like a lot of stuff that I think is a little bit glimpsed at and not really spoken about because so much of the story is almost um it's 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 other people talking about what happens uh it's with the exception of like what happens at the very end it's 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 like newspaper articles it's doctor's reports it's it's secondhand information of what one person heard someone else say um or you know it's someone repeating what wizard waitley said and it's ah, there's 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 a I wouldn't say necessarily an unreliable narrator, but there's a lot of like secondhand news. Also, Alexa, play secondhand news by Fleetwood Mac. And that's that's a gift for everyone who's listening uh, with their Alexa. How else one could? Okay, okay. Uh, and, and, when, and you know you've got this sort of you got these 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 scientists, and I remember the first time I read. You know, I remember, and so I remember this from the first time I'm reading. I'm not, uh-huh. but they had like a an elephant gun, mm-hmm. and they had like big old like you know pesticide things. Sure, they were gonna, like put paint in it, and they mm-hmm. were going to spray. You know, and and, and just that ain't going to work. Yeah, you know that's that's a D and D party right there. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. let's let's get our biggest gun and let's you know some out of box thinking. You know, and I would say, hey, ain't gonna work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really like the fact that it's like they have to look for a while and they figure out how to make the dust of Ibn Ghazi, and that that'll mm-hmm. that'll do it. But yeah, I was gonna say, uh, in a D and D game, what do you do for like Dunwich? It's like, how do you show that it's like, you know, it's 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 a town that's not that great. And my thoughts were like, what if uh, everyone used like older metals or like uh, a different style of housing that no one's lived in for like 500 years like uh, sod houses in an area where you don't need to make sod houses um, because there's plenty of wood or something or just like simplistic huts that you know you go through and you're like wait a minute what and that like has like no I mean you you run across small villages uh, all the time in D&D but what if it's a really kind of like strangely primitive village that 
it doesn't make sense why, you know, no one has, uh, you know, maybe they even have like really bad uh, habits, not habits, but um, hygiene. They have bad hygiene of some sort, like defecating and cleaning and eating out of the same river, uh, you know, just stuff like that where you're like, no, we don't want to eat here. This, They may be cannibals or they're eating roadkill or you know just just unpleasantness like i don't know i don't know um something like that something that just gives you kind of like a creepo yucko feeling but it's like well they're they're humans they're 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 not like degenerate humans in that way but in some ways they're like kind of regressed socially and technologically um that kind of thing just to give you know like kind of a let people know you're going into a creepy land but i don't know no, absolutely, and, and I like the one thing that I think that um, um, Lovecraft does very good mm-hmm. is that he describes um, he describes these older buildings, yeah, which are in ways much more advanced, mm-hmm. and he does that other thing for an atheist. He does this quite often. You know, the only church in Dunwich. Mm-hmm. Is closed. Yeah. And it's falling apart. Yeah. You know, and so we see that, we see that in other places like Innsmouth. Yeah. 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 Or we see that like, you know, um, at Providence, you know, there's a, of course a lot of churches. Sure. But, but the Church of the Starry Wisdom, which was originally, I think, an Episcopalian church, mm-hmm. it's falling apart. Yeah. You know, and again, so, you know, if you're doing a and d game, yeah, make a. You, all of a sudden, there's a town. What do you mean a town without a cleric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, not only is the temple closed down, but it's collapsed, and no one has any interest in uh, mm-hmm. using it. Or you could have like the uh, like some sort of like stone, uh, stone, stone uh, temple that you know has been abandoned and like. You know, uh, beggars live there. That's it. You know, or or it's used for livestock. Like even something even more kind of like a slap on the face to someone's deity. It's like, yeah, no, that's that's where we store our hay for the cows, or that's that's where the goats sleep. Yeah. And it's it's not a goat god. It's not a god of anything that would do it with goats. Like maybe it's 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 a god of like uh, <laughs> tempest or something Taylor. like that. Yeah. And, you know, some god of, like, oh, uh, you know, justice. And it's like, yeah, no, we use it for goats. <laughs> That's going to piss off some paladins. Uh, but, yeah, no, there's, oh, man, it's, I, I, the more I think about it, it's like there's so many cool things you could do with a Dunwich-style kind of thing. Uh, if, if you're doing a modern horror game, your Dunwich could lead into a Hills Have Eyes, Texas Chainsaw Massacre book in the house kind of story uh it could lead to a dunwich horror kind of thing or you could trick people into thinking that they're doing something like dunwich horror and then it becomes more of like insmith or something else uh you you uh turns in from uh the dunwich horror into uh shadow out of time or uh one of those one of those uh or, just or charles strauss's books which Ooh. laundry you know, Dunwich is that little city on the coast of England <laughs> where the the spies train. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that's pretty cool, and I, I feel like you can use Dunwich. You can just name check Dunwich. Uh, Fallout Three name checks. Oh, Fallout Three and Four uh, both name check Dunwich with the Dunwich Building in Fallout Three and Dunwich Borers, which is a quarry in Fallout Four. And both of them have spooky stuff that are very low crafty and going on. So just naming name checking Dunwich will send the heebie-jeebies up some people's spines, and uh, other people in the group who haven't read Lovecraft will be like, "What's the big deal?" And then they'll, you know, it's not like they can, I don't know, tell the whole Dunwich story in just a few mon- moments at the gaming table without some sort of penalties for out of play (laughs) side chatter i mean that is if you know your dungeon master is me and i get on people's case about that kind of stuff (laughs) now something something else i'm thinking sure um is um just story-wise and and i we i mentioned uh 
uh, S.T. Joshi uh -huh. uh, before, and and I like Dunator. I, I like sure. I really like the story, but Joshi called it a mistake. Okay. And the reason why he says it is he, he's basically it's a good versus evil story, uh -huh. which you don't see in the rest of Lovecraft's work. And it's definitely an experiment for Lovecraft. He did go a certain way and then corrected it. Uh, but that's just something that you might have in a D&D &D game mm -hmm. or where it, two things I think are, are set it apart. And I, you know, uh, I have mentioned to Josh, he, sure. he doesn't, doesn't remember, but I have said, you know, I don't always agree with you guy. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure he doesn't remember. I'm sure a lot of people have told him that. But, <laughs> you know, he, he, you know he, he, he has a point that it's a different type of story. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, that it's a good, and, and it's also got a lot of Christian analogies in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, why, well, Father, why have you forsaken me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I also feel like it's one of the few Lovecraft stories that could easily be turned into a movie. Um, <laughs> if, and you know what? We could get Sandra Dee to take the shirt off. <laughs> but it's 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 one of the few uh, Lovecraft stories that could be turned into a movie. Was turned into a movie at least twice, but I I, I think it's due for a. Uh, another big screen adaptation uh you know so, so i know that things are a little bit up in the air but that that's uh uh frodo and richard stanley uh-huh uh that's supposed to be the the, uh, the trilogy first one's going to be um you know is uh color out space and then which horror is supposed to be the second one okay all right i thought richard stanley got canceled but okay <laughs> so that's it i don't know i haven't i there's some things going on yeah maybe i'll do some follow-up yeah, yeah but even if richard stanley isn't handling it uh uh elijah wood uh uh, for you know, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was he was he was the money bag. So okay, right. okay. So, so yeah. I, I don't know. You're right. There may have been some changes, yeah. and it may open up to other people. Mm -hmm. Um. So. So yes. Yeah. Um. But so there are some I think motifs there that maybe the good versus evil side mm -hmm. yeah. that uh, apply more to a role-playing game than a lot of other Lovecraftian stories. Oh, sure, definitely, definitely. It's a little bit uh, harder to play some... Uh, I mean, like, I, I have cribbed the Dunwich Horror for so many things and just changed names and just changed mm -hmm. things so much. Um, Dunwich Horror, I think I have cribbed the most... Uh, other than the only thing I've cribbed more than the Dunwich Horror for my role playing games is uh, a uh, Scrooge McDuck comic book uh, where him and Donald get the Golden Fleece. Uh, and the Dun Quack Horror? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I bet you could probably do uh, the Dunwich Horror for DuckTales uh, fairly easily. But uh, yeah, no, no. It's, it's the Dunwich Horror and. I have to highly recommend if you haven't heard the 1940s suspense radio armed uh, radio forces uh, network, uh, whatever it's called, uh, the, the Dunwich Horror from Suspense is amazing. It's got Ro uh, Ronald Coleman as a bunch of different voices. It is a uh, transmission from... Uh, on top of Sentinel Hill by the, 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 the scientists uh, and librarians uh, from Miskatonic University, them telling their story of defeating uh, the Dunwich Horror on All Hallows' Eve. They're, they're, they're preparing for it. And it's just an amazing way to tell the story, um, which, you know, a lot of parts of it are from uh, newspaper clippings and, like, just secondhand information. It's it's a really good it's really good i've posted it on this channel I, I think if you go to a couple halloweens back not this last halloween but the halloween before that we had the dunnage horror and yeah um it's really good you should check uh, also, it out uh, dark adventure radio theater does dunnage horror oh yeah 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 they they do one that you have to pay money for the other one's in the public domain and uh -oh. <laughs> anyone could listen to it uh, whatever they want, but no, Dark Adventure Radio Theater, uh, 
Sean and everyone there. They do such a good job with stuff. I just recently saw that they're working on some new things. I'm not specifically sure what right now, but they're working on editing it. Uh, I follow Sean on uh, Facebook. I think you do as well. And uh, many of you who listen yeah. probably do, but yeah. So, done so a one other thing though that I have used in the gaming sure. is something that Lovecraft was very influenced in. Okay. And is the great god Pan. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is obviously and so I have set where they're basically trying to track down the villainous, which is a demigoddess. Yeah. It basically in this. So um I think if you don't especially I think that works very good in a steampunk mm-hmm. or a uh, you know a Victorian era yeah uh, and if you don't want to maybe give you people know Dunwich horror but don't want to give them too much clues uh, the great God Pan is another great and uh, in fact um, who wrote that just set, just uh, uh, so everyone knows it was oh not yet um, also also wrote uh, Mackner was it Mac no it was Blackwood or Mackner it was Arthur Mackin Mac, or Mackin yes. yeah yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna give you more clues, and <laughs> thank you. I, yeah. I, I sometimes get Mackin and Blackwood. And stuff. Yeah, no, no, it's totally understandable. Same era, British guys. Mm. Yeah, but uh, also, um, sort of the 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 baddies of either the second or third uh, uh, season of Teenage the uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh-huh are uh, followers of the uh, great god Pan. And you're talking about the Netflix or Hulu show? Yeah, the, Netflix, okay. Netflix, yeah. Not the not the one with the talking cat. No, not 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 the one with the to- not 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 the one there. Okay. Okay, cool cool. All right, yeah. Um cool. And the last thing I'm going to say sure. about the the movie. Uh-huh. Sandra D takes her shirt off. That's that's what uh yeah, I I I recall that. And Dean Stockwell does some crazy things with his hands that, um, yes. oh man, I, I'm trying to think. I've seen like so many people recreate that at Lovecraft Film Festivals and Cthulhu Con and whatnot. Just the, I, 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 I'm doing it right now, but um, only Dave can can see me and maybe not that well because my microphone's in the way. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I think it's even on the cover of the Dunwich Horror. Um, but we're not talking about the Dunwich Horror. We're talking about the town yeah. that happens right next to it. Um, yeah, and yeah, w- with all these cool little hints, uh, you can you can add a Dunwich element to your RPG or short story, long story, poem, whatever. And you know, you don't have to credit us, but we think that's cool. And uh, I think that's it for this episode, Dave. Is there anything else? That I you think, think that's that's it. You know, there's one other thing. I'm sorry. Sure. They just want to. Uh, something else. I think that with the Dunwich Horror, uh, an inspiration. Again, I use for gaming, but definitely inspiration. Love for, is uh, Ambrose Pierce the damn thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, if you haven't if you haven't read the damn thing, I would definitely suggest that. That's right up there I mean it's, it's not as good but I enjoy it as much as The Strange Occurrence at Owl Creek sure sure and I want to say that uh, Dutch Horror is is a little bit influenced by The Great God Pan if I'm not mistaken oh absolutely yeah it, 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 the, the, the major plot is, is taken from The Great God Pan yeah so Lo- uh, Lovecraft is very open with that oh yeah 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 and I, you know that's that's another one uh, if ah Sometimes I wish we focused more on Mackin on this show, uh, and sometimes we do. But uh, yeah, no, uh, read The Great God Pan. Uh, also, uh, pretty much read the, uh, oh, just read Arthur Mackin. I mean, whatever's available out there, you know, probably one of the greatest uh, Welsh wizards of the 19th century, and he wrote some horror too, so... Yeah. (laughs) All right, everyone. Thank you again for listening to Dave and I ramble on. And uh, the time is now. And uh, remember, help support this show so we can keep putting out episodes, daily episodes, weekly episodes. Check out pgttcm.com. Go to the shop 
which will take you to Threadless, and then you can see our coolest shirts. I think I'm going to make a Dunnett shirt. You know, I, uh, I w- my family went to Dunwich, and all I got was this lousy shirt. I think that might be fun. Uh, um, demigod D- DNA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, um, but definitely uh, check out the past shows. We've got the Dunwich Horror. We've talked about Wibble Waitley. We've talked about a bunch of different stuff. At some point in time, we're going to have Ken Height back on here, and he's going to talk about uh his his travel log uh through lovecraft country oh i gotta i gotta put i I gotta get ken back on the show to talk about that stuff and we'll see you next time and join us next time when we're talking about ihort and elder things i know we've talked about elder things far 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 in the past i mean so long ago that the uh dire lake exposition expedition was actually still going on but We're going to be talking about him again, and this time with Dave, so... Yeah, last time we talked about Elder Things, Uh we referred to them as the Middle-Aged Things. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, you know, the... uh, Yeah, it was a while back. So, join us, check out our show notes, get yourself a glary guitar, maybe some uh, Copper Cow. You know, we've also got that uh, Taza Stoneground chocolate from Somerset, Massachusetts, right in Lovecraft Country stone ground on top of a sentinel hill using micro earthquakes no that, that's not true but it is really good stone ground chocolate from massachusetts lovecraft country and uh we'll see you next time and have a safe one uh be nice to goats give them raisins if it's okay with their owner and uh stay away from dunwich nothing good's gonna come from it you're not gonna find anyone to help it's it's bad news so you know oh you know how someone could get to dunwich on accident these days dave how could one get to dunwich on accident siri siri and uh i I was thinking google maps mess a map quest mix up or something you know an old road that doesn't exist anymore but you know anyway ugh Dunwich. Stay away. All right. We'll see you next time, everyone. Bye. Okay, cool.